Well, the story of the week has clearly been superannuation and how the federal government wants to get its hands on your money. And it is your money. It's not the super fund's money. It's not the government's money. It's your money that you have saved for your retirement. And you well know that you are forced to save this money and it's not unfair that you would expect that money to stay where you put it and be used for the sole purpose of maximising your retirement savings. Now, I needn't remind you, but I will anyway, the government made it clear before last year's election that there would be no changes to superannuation. We said about superannuation that we would um, uh, maintain the system. Australians shouldn't expect major changes to superannuation. We've said we have no intention of making any super changes. One of the things that we're doing in this campaign <clears throat> is we're making all of our policies clear. Clear. We're putting them out there for all to see. Now, there are a number of things on the table here. One, of course, is reducing tax concessions for superannuation. At the moment, if you earn less than 250k a year, you can add an extra 25k to your super fund each year at a tax rate of 15%, which is clearly well below the marginal tax rate you'd pay if you took that cash in hand on your pay packet. Now, according to Assistant Treasurer... Stephen Jones, trying to maximise your retirement savings so you don't have to rely on the aged pension is a bad thing. This is what he had to say about people making extra super contributions with tax concessions. We have got to have a debate about how much we are willing to continue to subsidise these mega-sized, oversized superannuation balances that clearly aren't about retirement income. Now, what does he mean they're not about retirement income. Sure, you do get a tax break, but that's the whole point. The tax break is there to encourage people to put more money into their super funds so the government has to spend less on the pension. It's hardly rocket science. And we're talking about $25,000 a year. And these days, that's the price of a decent used car. It's hardly cattle stations. And Mr Jones' comment about quote-unquote mega-sized super balances brings us to his other point. He has an issue with people having lots of money in their super funds. Why? Because you're paying less tax by putting that money into super and leaving it in super. They want you to have to take that money as personal income on your pay slip, so you have to give more money to the government. It's as simple as that. The top tax rate in Australia is 47%, including the Medicare levy, for people earning more than $180,000. It's nearly half of your pay. No wonder the government wants to restrict how much you can put in your super. Now, I know many of you at home probably don't earn anywhere near 180 k a year, but keep in mind that the average Australian needs to earn $336,000 a year in order to feel wealthy. And it's honestly no great surprise when you look at the cost of living and property in this country, we are some of the richest people in the world thanks to the value of our assets, but very few of us have the cash to feel like we are actually wealthy. God forbid you'd want to make sure you have as much money in retirement as possible and perhaps after you've reduced a lot of your outgoings by paying off your mortgage, the kids have moved out, you can actually feel like you are wealthy for the first time in your life. Imposing a cap on superannuation balances is not about fairness. It's about the government getting its hands on more of your money. Treasurer Jim Chalmers, he's also been highly critical of the previous government's policy of allowing people to withdraw money from their super to help buy a house. Now, there are two reasons for that. One is that the super industry is dominated by industry super funds that are owned and run by the union movement, and they donate a lot of money to the ALP. Talk about conflict of interest. And the other, of course, is that it's money you saved at a tax rate of 15% instead of whatever your income tax rate is. Again, it's about the government getting its hands on more of your money. And in any case, surely buying a house with your super money makes complete sense. The point of super is to provide security for retirement. Property is an asset that, as we know, rarely decreases in value. So if you use your super to buy a home, you can either end up with a big nest egg if you decide to downsize when you retire, 
or you have the security of having paid off your own home. Now, this has all been sparked because Treasurer Jim Chalmers this week launched the government's plan to legislate a quote-unquote objective for superannuation. Look, I don't know about you, but the objective of superannuation is pretty clear to me. Save for retirement, invest those savings to grow your retirement fund and take the pressure off the pension system. Seems to be pretty straightforward stuff. It's patently obvious to you and me. Not so the federal government. Well, that's not quite true. It is also patently obvious to Mr Chalmers, but that's not what a legislated objective for superannuation is about. It is again, surprise, surprise, about the government getting its hands on more of your money. And not just about getting money, but dictating how the superannuation fund that you have chosen to maximise your profits can invest your money. Now, Mr Chalmers says that it's, quote, to preserve the savings to deliver income for a dignified retirement alongside government support in an equitable and sustainable way. I mean, what exactly does equitable and sustainable mean in this context? Well, it means opening the door to more government interference in your superannuation balance. It's about using your money, perhaps even taking your money, for, the, for whatever purpose the federal government sees fit. The Treasurer isn't hiding this. This is what he said about it earlier in the week. These opportunities to achieve a double dividend, good results for super funds and members, and good results for our nation. In areas like affordable housing, climate, the care economy and digital. Superannuation fund can invest in anything it wants at any time. It can invest in housing, it can invest in renewable energy, it could invest in technology, anything it wants as long as it believes it will provide a good return on investment for its customers. Super funds don't need any legislation to allow them to invest in these things, but that's clearly not the point. The point is that by enshrining this stuff in legislation, it makes it an obligation for super funds to invest in this stuff, regardless of whether they are better investments available to maximise your returns. It's the beginning of direct government interference in superannuation. Labor wants to be able to use your money to meet its own objectives, and this was never the purpose of superannuation. And there was Stephen Jones on Thursday just driving home the point that this is all about taking more control. It was at the self-managed super fund industry conference in Melbourne yesterday. Bizarrely enough, it had the theme of Bees. Why a business industry conference needs an insect theme, I haven't the foggiest. But I suppose that's what happens when nerds try to be funny. In any case, he took advantage of the bee theme to tell the audience that super savings should be managed in the best interests of the hive, i.e. everyone else and not the person who has invested your money, and that, quote, we want to make sure there is plenty of honey to go around. Let's just share your money around and use it for projects the government wants, not ones that will deliver you more money for your retirement. I tell you what, all this talk of honey reminds me of something. Well, happy, happy appetite is a happy, happy... No, brother, empty again. Only the sticky parts left. It would seem that Stephen Jones is Winnie the Pooh and the honey pot is your super. And just as in that clip, the Labor government will try to extract every last drop for itself.